In this video, I'm going to show you how to do partial products multiplication using an area model. I'm going to start with a two digit by one digit problem, and let's do 34 times 8. To set up the area model for partial products, I'm going to draw a 34 by 8 rectangular array. And I'm going to just sketch this out as a large rectangle. So this rectangle is going to be 34 across the top and 8 across the side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 34 in expanded form. So I'm going to make this be 30 plus 4 across the top. And I'm going to go ahead and divide this up. The 4 would be somewhere over here. I'm not going to divide it exactly accurately. I realize that that 4 box is actually way too big compared to the 30. And now what we've done is we've split our 34 by 8 array into two partial products. And those partial products are, we have in this big square right here, big, big rectangle right here, this big rectangle is an 8 by 30 rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. It's an 8 by 30. And that means it has an area of 24 with 1 power of 10. So that means it has an area of 240 square units. And our other partial product, this, this rectangle over here, is an 8 along this side by 4 along this side. So it's an 8 by 4 rectangle. And an 8 by 4 rectangle has an area of 32 square units. So I'm going to go ahead and shade this in so we can kind of see our two different partial products here. We have this big rectangle right here that's the 8 by 30. And when we combine this, this 8 by 30 rectangle with our 8 by 4 rectangle, which is this one right over here, we end up making our 34 by 8 large rectangle that represents our, our problem, 34 times 8. We call each of these rectangles our partial products because they're part of the product to 34 times 8. So to find the entire product of 34 times 8, I'm going to take the red rectangle, which has an area of 240 square units, and I'm going to add it to the blue rectangle, which is 32 square units. And when I add these two up, I'm going to get an answer of, or a product of 272. So 34 times 8 is equal to 272. Let's now take a look at how this same partial products uh, area model could be used for a three digit by one digit problem. So again, I'm going to draw a large rectangle. And across the top, this is going to be 387. And on the side, it will be 6. I'm going to split 387 into expanded form. So in expanded form, that will be 300 plus 80 plus 7. And now I'm going to go ahead and divide up these parts so that I have a 300 by 6 array, an 80 by 6 array, and a 7 by 6 array. And I'm going to go ahead and write these partial products in the boxes. This is the 300 by 6, which is equal to 18 with 2 powers of 10. This is the 80 by 6, which is 48 with 1 power of 10. And this is the 7 by 6, which is just 42. And I've done some rough uh, coloring here just to make it a little bit more clear. So we're ready to now add up our partial products, which are represented by the different colored rectangles. So our first partial product is 1,800 from the red rectangle. Then we have 480 from the blue. And lastly, 42 from the green. When you're adding these up, make sure that you line up the place values. If you just line up the ones place, you'll have everything lined up correctly. And when we go ahead and do our addition, we have a final product of 387 times 6 is 2,322. Let's now look at partial products with a two-digit by two-digit uh, multiplication problem. Just like before, the first step is to draw a large rectangle. And go ahead and label each side. 
Uh, because this top side it looks a little bit longer, I'm going to make it be the 83 and then the left side be the 62. Remember that the commutative property of multiplication says that 62 times 83 is the same thing as 83 times 62. So it doesn't really matter which side I label as which. Next, I'm going to write each of my factors in expanded form. So 83 is the same thing as 80 plus 3. And 62 is the same thing as 60 plus 2. Now, notice that 62 I did need to write in expanded form when I was doing a single digit factor there. I didn't need to do anything because if it was a single digit, it didn't have anything to expand. So now I'm going to split apart my partial products. And I'm going to draw it like this because the 2, if we're looking at this as being 60, this should be way longer than the 2 is down here. Now I realize that this 2 is still way too big, but I want it to be big enough that I can actually fit some numbers in the box. And I'm going to do the same thing with the 80 and the 3. So I've now sketched out my, my area model, and now I'm ready to fill in my partial products. This first big rectangle right here is 60 on the side, 80 on the top, so it's a 60 by 80 rectangle. And 6 times 8 is 48, but we have 2 powers of 10, so that box will be 4,800. This next one right here is a 60 by 3 rectangle, so it will be 60 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18 with 1 power of 10, so it has a, an area of 180 square units. The one directly below the, the red one is a 2 on the side by 80 across, so it will be a 2 by 80 rectangle, which has an area of 160 square units. And our last box is 2 on the side, 3 along the top, so it's a 2 by 3 which has an area of six square units. If I were to go through and add up all of these partial products, I would have 4,800 plus 180 plus 160. And then my last one was six. When I add all of these up, I get eight, nine, 10, 11. We get a total product for 62 times 83 is equal to 5,146. And lastly, let's look at a three-digit by two-digit multiplication problem. And we could also think of this as a two-digit by three-digit if we wanted to use the commutative property to turn this problem around into 43 times 726. My first step is to draw a large rectangle to represent the rectangular array of 726 by 43 and I'm going to make the 726 be the long side and the 43 be the shorter side. I'm going to write 726 in expanded form. The 7 is worth 700, the 2 is worth 20, and the 6 is worth 6. I'm also going to write 43 in expanded form. The 4 is worth 40 and the 3 is worth 3. I'm now going to split apart my partial products and really the, the easiest way to split these apart is just look for your addition signs because that's where we're going to have all of our, our parts of our, uh, of our uh, solution. So I have six partial products in this problem. And this first box in the top left, this box right here, is a 40 by 700. 40 by 700. 4 times 7 is 28, and we have 3 powers of 10, so that would be 28,000. Our next box, just to the right of it, is a 40 by 20. 4 times 2 is 8, and we have 2 powers of 10. The one just to the right is a 40 by 6. So 40 by 6 equals 4 times 6 is 24 with 1 power of 10. If we go back to the bottom left... In the bottom left, we now have a 3 by 700 rectangular array. 3 by 700, that would be 21 with 2 powers of 10. Our one just to the right of that is a 3 by 20. So 3 by 20 is equal to 6 with 1 power of 10. 
And then our last one on the far bottom right is a three by six and three times six equals 18. If we now take all of our partial products, we have 28,000, we have 800, we have 240, we have 2,100, 2,100, we have 60, and then lastly, we have 18. If we then go and add all of these up, let's see, that'll be an 8, 6, and 4 is 10, and 1 is 11. 8 and 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. 8 and 2 is 10, and 1 more is 11. And then 2 and 1 is 3. We now have the product of 726 and 43 is 31,218.